You're listening to the Study Legal English podcast, helping lawyers and law students become fluent in legal English. For more information, visit studylegalenglish.com. Hello and welcome to the Study Legal English podcast. I'm your host, Louise, and today I'm going to read an extract from an article all about intellectual property. The article was written by Liz Cohen, partner, and Claire Phipps-Jones, senior associate, in the IP litigation team at Bristow's LLP. Bristow's is an independent full-service law firm based in London with an international client base and with expertise in the areas of technology and intellectual property. If you want to know more about this law firm, visit www.bristow's.com and you can find the article published on the Lex 100 website, a fantastic website for law students. I'll leave all the links in the show notes. So today we will be looking at what IP law is, key skills needed for IP lawyers and the day-to-day work of an IP lawyer. Before we get started, I want to remind you that if you're a member, you can access your benefits over at studylegalenglish.com. If you're not a member, go to studylegalenglish.com forward slash pricing to check out the member options. If you become a member, you will get access to resources which are going to really help you to get a step further in your learning of legal English. Of course, it's fantastic that you're listening to the podcast. But if you're thinking, hmm, I probably could do a little bit more to improve my legal English. Well, now is your chance. Become a member and you're going to get access to resources which can help you do just that. As well, I've just got a little question for you listeners. Do you work or do you want to work in the area of IP? Let me know. Tell me about it. Send me an email to louise at studylegalenglish.com or join me on social media. Head over to the Facebook group. That's the Study Legal English group. Or find me on Instagram. My Instagram name is at Legal Englisher. So let's go. What is intellectual property law? It's the global Samsung against Apple smartphone wars, the understated and extreme simplicity of Apple's iPad, the disappearance of the pirate bay, the reason why anyone can publish the football fixtures, the law preventing you from jailbreaking your games console, The reason that you don't buy your Predator football boots from Adidas and can't wear a Topshop t-shirt with Rihanna's face on it. It's the secret behind the distinct taste of Coca-Cola and your love of seedless grapes. And that's just to name a few. (laughs) Intellectual property law protects those rights that are intangible intellectual creations. Intangible means untouchable. The obvious rights covering most of the examples that I just referred to are patents. These protect inventions, trademarks which protect brands, designs, which relates to 3D shape conformation and copyright in relation to literary and artistic works. But there are other rights such as database rights, confidential information, trade secrets and plant variety rights. There are many opportunities in intellectual property and your work can involve any part of the life cycle of an IP right. This can include assisting in the creation and registration of rights, for example, by drafting and processing a patent or trademark application with registries in the UK and abroad. It can entail assisting in transactions involving IP rights to allow a rights holder to exploit and make money from its right. 
for example, by drafting and negotiating research and development R&D agreements or dealing with the transfer or licensing of IP rights in corporate transactions. Of course, it can also involve litigating IP rights when it all goes wrong. Useful or key skills which are needed. Practicing IP can involve contentious and non-contentious work, with most firms having combined departments. However, firms with a greater focus on IP, such as Bristow's LLP, separate out such work into various departments by IP right and or whether the work is litigious. Working in IP involves working with clients ranging from individual inventors, artists, musicians, designers and writers to massive global corporations. A particularly meticulous nature and love of language is certainly of assistance when involved in, for example, the drafting of an IP right or non-contentious transactional work, where it is necessary to map out the possible future consequences of one's choice of words. An ability to understand and apply legal principles to sometimes complex situations with an eye on your client's industry and commercial drivers is a crucial skill when identifying a suitable strategy in litigation or in possible settlement negotiations when you want to reach a resolution outside of court. In the case of litigation, the job also involves liaising with patent and trademark attorneys who are generally responsible for registering IP rights and will have made various submissions on the validity of a given right in order for it to be granted. Liaising with experts in the relevant industry in particular with regard to whether an invention was new and non-obvious when it was applied for, or perhaps to assist in determining what a patent claim actually means to those in the industry and whether an allegedly infringing product actually indeed does infringe. Liaising with barristers and as well in many cases lawyers from other jurisdictions to ensure alignment of the approach taken in proceedings across the globe. This obviously requires good communication skills both oral and written. Day-to-day work In the patent litigation department at Bristow's, your day largely depends on the stage of each of the various litigation projects that you're working on. It can involve initial meetings or calls with clients to discuss a case and its prospects, drafting pleadings, considering prior art, I mean earlier publications that can be used to invalidate a patent, reviewing documents to determine whether they are relevant and need to be disclosed, preparing a product or process description with the client, which involves drafting a detailed description of the product or process that is alleged to be infringing. It involves meeting with experts, having conferences with counsel to discuss and prepare the case for trial, and obviously days in court alongside which there is always correspondence with the opposing side, calls and correspondence with the client to keep them well informed and obtain instructions, and often calls with foreign counsel to ensure alignment in various jurisdictions. It is not unusual to have a number of cases each at a different stage, so managing your time is vital to ensure that all deadlines are met. Of course, there is often other work, such as preparing freedom to operate advice, including infringement and validity opinions, for example, considering whether a client's proposed new commercial product may potentially infringe an existing patent held by a third party prior to launch. 
This can involve reviewing not only the product, but conducting searches of and reporting on potentially relevant patents. You may also be involved in patent licensing and settlement negotiations. A quick note on pronunciation. Patent is the English pronunciation. Patent is the American pronunciation. However, I have to say quite often in England, we kind of use them interchangeably. So my advice to you is whichever pronunciation you prefer, use that one. Patent is the English pronunciation. Patent is the US pronunciation. Great. So that's the end of this episode. I hope you found it useful and learned something new. Do head over to www.bristos.com for other articles on this particular topic. And I'll leave a link in the show notes to the article which I read in this episode. Don't forget to answer my question. Do you work in or would you like to work in the area of IP? Tell me about it. Let me know about it. Send me an email to louise at studylegalenglish.com or join me on social media. Just search for Study Legal English or Legal Englisher. Of course, if you're a member, head over to studylegalenglish.com for all your membership benefits. And if you're thinking of becoming a member, go to studylegalenglish.com forward slash pricing. So thanks for listening and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Study Legal English podcast. If you really want to get ahead, why not become a member and gain access to many learning resources? Visit studylegalenglish.com forward slash pricing.